Now, as you'll hear these five stages, the vast majority of people that I see are in stages one, where you have a normal glucose value, or stage two, where your glucose value has started to bump. Most viewers of this channel understand that by far the biggest cause of heart attack, stroke, dementia, blindness, kidney disease is diabetes. Most folks don't realize they've got diabetic problems until it's way too late. So one of the major focus points is understanding the earlier stages of diabetes. One of our, my viewers gave me a, sent me a great reference on just that issue. This is an old article. It's back in 2004 in Diabetes Magazine, but it talks about the natural progression of diabetes. Now, as you'll hear these five stages, the vast majority of people that I see are in stages one, where you have a normal glucose value, or stage two, where your glucose value has started to bump. Stage three is not so, doesn't last very long. Stage four is where you're starting to get uh, significant decompensation. And then stage five is just frank diabetes. Frank meaning not the name of the guy, but in medical terminology, frank means complete. Stage five is complete diabetes. You're not getting any beta cell function at all. So I'm going to read through the details on these again because the viewers on this channel tend to enjoy the detail. So stage one is compensation. Just like the thyroid, the first uh, evidence of thyroid problem is not a loss of thyroid function, it's increased thyroid function. It's a compensation. Same thing with this other very common hormonal problem. The first sign of problems with your beta cells, with uh, hitting in the area of diabetes, is not decreased insulin function, it's increased insulin function. Stage one is compensation. Insulin secretion increases to maintain normal glycemia in the face of insulin resistance and or decreasing beta cell mass. This is characterized by maintenance of a differentiated function within intact uh, glucose levels. Now, I'm going to mention Jason Fung in a couple of these. I'm a big Jason Fung fan. Uh, I've read a couple of his uh, books. Uh, they're really good books. I have gotten deeper into fasting, a large part because of Jason Fung. But I'm going to make a couple of criticisms of, of Dr. Fung here, or, or a couple of points where I don't exactly agree with him. Some folks would say that Dr. Fung says it's not really a, that no such thing as an insulin resistance. Personally, I haven't heard seen that in what I've read or, or seen in his videos, but I've heard several people say that. I don't believe that. I mean, just like here, they're saying your body can get resistant to insulin. And then in order to maintain normal insulin, uh, normal glucose levels, you have to increase the amount of insulin to get there. I see that in patients all the time because I see so many of these stage one patients. By the way, if you're interested, check out our website. We're going to have an event at University of Louisville Conference Center uh, where you can get your uh, CIMT and all your labs. And we'll have a two-day boot camp experience going over all of that. So uh, here's the, uh, uh, the next stage. It's stage two where you're starting to get an increase in glucose level. Uh, your insulin just can't keep up. Stage two occurs when glucose levels start to rise, reaching abnormal levels. This is a, or levels over 100, 120. This is a stable state, and those are um, millimoles. Those are not the uh, milligrams per, per deciliter that we look at. Uh, this is a stable state of beta cell ad adaptation. I've seen patients remain in that state for decades. In other words, they're compensating, but not a, no not a complete compensation. They're putting out more insulin to keep the blood level, uh, level of glucose down, but still not totally succeeding. Stage three is a transient, unstable period of early compensation, which glucose levels rise relatively rapidly to uh, frank diabetes of stages four and five. 
Stage four is characterized with a stable decompensation with more severe beta cell differentiation and, and degradation. Finally, stage five is characterized by severe decompensation representing a profound reduction in beta cell mass with progression to ketosis. You hear that word and a lot of people say, oh, you want to get to ketosis, right? It's healthy. Yes, if you are still able to metabolize sugars, glucose. The, the ketoacidosis that you see in a stage five diabetes patient that patient is burning fat and creating ketones because they are no longer able to burn glucose in their blood. Those of us who fast or cut carbs to the extent to achieve ketosis, we're, it's not that we're in, un, incapable of metabolizing glucose, it's that we don't have any glucose there to burn. So another point about what is ketosis, healthy ketosis versus unhealthy diabetic ketoacidosis. It's worth reading on a little bit further. Movement across stages one through four can be in either direction. Now this is another place where I have a comment about Dr. Fung. He, he's correct when he says over and over again, there's a misperception out there that can't quote cure diabetes. You don't really cure it and make all of these problems go away forever. I've had plenty of people lose 30 pounds and go from stages three, three and, and a lot from stage four back up to stage one. But you still have some challenges there. So the other point I'd say is that this is not something that's been unknown in the standard medical community. This is back in Diabetes Magazine, back in 2004. So again, it's been known that you can reverse this process. It's just not that common. Let me cover a couple of other items. This is just a visual showing the, um, that it's in Diabetes Magazine, Volume 53, Supplement 3, December 2004. This is a visual showing the stages. Stage zero is normal. And stage one is compensated, where the, you're pushing more insulin out there. You're getting over five, over 10. I've seen patients with normal glucose values, but it took them a insulin level of 40 to 50 to get there. And likewise, you'll often see somebody in these stages two through four, where, or two and three, where they're their glucose value is up around 170, 180, and their insulin is up around 100, 60 to 100. And you should never have to get your insulin level above 50. And for the most part, you should never have to get a glucose level above 120. So here you see stages four and five where you have decompensation. You've already passed through stage three where you're starting to get that loss of beta cell function. A couple of other quick points that were in this article, very interesting points. Now, if you're a uh, lab animal ethicist and you don't like use of lab animals, you may want to cut at this point because the next two slides have to do with use of lab animals. Lab animals where they created a model for diabetes. One is by giving them streptozosin. If you give laboratory mice streptozosin, it wipes out their beta cells in their pancreas. In order to uh, demonstrate the, res the continued responsiveness to insulin, they took some uh, lab mice that had this problem, type 1 uh, diabetes, because they were, their beta cells were wiped out with streptozosin. They put in a uh, transplant. And it worked in some mice, and it didn't in others. As you can see, these are the mice that are getting blood glucose values up around 400 and, and more. The transplant obviously didn't work for them. These mice keeping their blood sugars lower, and uh, evidently the transplant worked. Now, one final, final point here. This was a, a similar type of thing. What they did here was take out about 90% of the pancreas, leaving only 
you could assume only 10% of their beta cells. There were still, according to them, two different populations. This population where the, um, the beta cell function was wiped out and they were type 1 diabetic. This group, however, where the beta cell functions were still working and they were still getting blood sugars less than 150. I have a little bit of difference with these authors, though. I would say there's a third category, and those are the category which I tend to see a lot. Again, insulin-resistant folks, or folks that had decreased... Uh, obviously, these mice, by definition, were not insulin-resistant. They had this mid-level, midway loss of insulin function, beta cell function. As a human, you wouldn't call them insulin resistant, you'd call them pre-diabetic. I hope this uh, was simple enough, and I hope this was clear enough to, uh, to be helpful. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. And maybe I'll learn to present better and learn the subjects better to the point where, uh, where it's easier to tag along. Thanks again for your interest. Have you heard about our event, uh, November 8th and 9th in Louisville? Check it out. Go to the front uh, page of our website, right there, and then click for more information.